The Flying Inn, which was published in 1914, is not one of Chesterton's best-known books. It had the misfortune to appear just as the First World War began, which rather eclipsed its effect. The novel describes the attempt by a British aristocrat, Lord Ivywood, and his progressive friends to impose prohibition on Britain and Islamify the country at the same time. In this he is aided and encouraged by a Turkish character called Amon Nisizra. A flame-haired Irishman called Dalroy, an archetypal English publican called Humphrey Pump, and an aristocratic poet, Wimpole, armed with a keg of rum, a large cheese, and the sign of Pump's defunct pub, The Old Ship, eventually thwart this plot. After all the pubs are forced to close, they find a legal loophole that allows them to move around England to sell alcohol. Finally, after a brief battle, Misesra and his cohorts are defeated, and Ivywood ends up alive, but insane. It's a bizarre satire, but the relevance now, a century after publication, is startling. Misesra travels the country giving lectures on the superiority of Islam over British and Western civilization. According to him, everything of any importance or note in Britain has an Islamic origin. This even includes the names of pubs. The Saracen's Head, for instance, is actually the Saracen is a head, while the Admiral Benbow is really Amir Ali Benbow's, and so on. Misisra's nonsense is familiar today to anyone who has encountered claims by Islamic clerics and others that the Arabs saved the classical literature of the West, were the original inhabitants of the Holy Land, discovered America before Columbus, and invented just about everything. Misisra gets away with it for a number of reasons, as one of the sane characters of the book Lady Joan realises there is no subject on which the Little Turk could not instantly produce a theory. And he is consistent in his theorising, but is also ill-informed and always wrong. Chesterton's main targets are the progressives, who are portrayed as superficial and easily seduced by fads and meaningless intellectualising. Vegetarianism, alternative medicines and diets, modern abstract art, academia and New Age philosophies all take a hit. And Chesterton here is having a go at contemporaries such as George Bernard Shaw. Ivywood is a bloodless, colourless progressive, a member of an elite that is out of touch with the general population and with no sense of duty to their culture. He is also a devotee of Nietzschean nihilism, he wants to break down all barriers in order to perfect mankind. The problem is, he has no clear idea where his ideas will lead. We shall know these things when we have achieved them, he says. But as Lady Joan correctly points out, the breaking of barriers might be the breaking of everything. It's this devotion to the abstract and the non-human, and the espousal of relativist values, that makes Ivywood and the progressives susceptible to Islam, which, when everything else is broken, will remain to take over, because it will be the only thing that's not broken. In The Flying Inn, Chesterton may be less concerned about the possibility of Islamization and just be using Islam as a vehicle to attack the progressive mindset, but it's worth remembering some of the things that make their appearance. The banning of alcohol, but the suggestion that cannabis should be legalised because it is a custom to consume it in the Islamic world. The removal of the cross in public, or its substitution by the crescent, including on St Paul's Cathedral. The choice to use a crescent instead of a cross on ballot papers. The proposal to merge Christianity with Islam to produce Chrislam. The introduction of polygamy and harems the gradual removal of the artistic representation of animal forms, the hint that infant marriages are acceptable, the increase in the Muslim population at universities and in the country at large, 
the replacement of traditional police and army headgear with fezzes, the alteration of the makeup of the army to make it less British, the intention to merge East and West in one, and so on. Were it not for its remarkable political prescience, the Flying Inn would not merit much attention. It has an idiosyncratic and whimsical touch to it. Interspersed in its narrative are songs and poems, most notably The Rolling English Road, which took on a life of its own outside the novel. So that much, at least, has survived.